inglés para los negocios de importación. Esta es nuestra segunda sesión y vamos a ver el tema de cultura o en inglés, culture. Bueno, ya me conocen, soy Liliana Quipusco y para comenzar vamos a ver las consideraciones del curso. Esto ya lo vimos la semana pasada, pero de todas maneras le vamos a volver a dar una repasada. You must speak English during the entire conference. La segunda. You can ask questions during the course of the conference. Puedes realizar preguntas durante el transcurso de la conferencia. Third, o tercero. I will appreciate you sharing anecdotes, experiences, or problems related to the subject in order to help you. Les voy a agradecer mucho que puedan compartir anécdotas, experiencias, o problemas que tengan para ver si podemos ayudarnos. Fourth, o cuarto. At the end of each session, we will have an exam of 10 multiple choice questions, that is, for alternatives. Al final de cada sesión, vamos a tener un examen de 10 preguntas de opción múltiple con 4 alternativas. Ok, entonces ahora sí, empezamos en inglés. So, first of all, what is it culture? So, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, culture, it is a way of life especially about general customs and beliefs of a particular group, people at a particular time. Let's see that it says a particular group. So it is not one person, it is a group of people, okay? For example, an American culture has been imported into Peru. How can we see piece of American culture being imported into Peru? For example, uh, when we see Halloween in Peru, it is Halloween. It is not a. It is not from Peruvian culture. It is from American culture, right? So, according to Oxford Dictionary, culture is the idea, custom, and social behavior of a particular people or society. Again, it says people or society. That it means that it's not one person, it's a group of persons. Okay? Okay, so, um, next. Why is culture so important for business? I want you to think about why it could be so important for business. So, last week we were talking about uh, Greetings, and we said that one, the most important thing about greetings was to know about what time was in our client or provider country. So in here, for a culture, what it will be important for you? So, it is important because there are multiple factors that affect all business. There is production that affect business, that is how marketing works. For example, it is, it's not going to be the same marketing in here in Peru as in another country, for example, Ecuador. Let's see an example of this, of marketing and production. Uh, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken in Peru, is selling uh, the fried chicken with some um, lentils. Menestra. So in here they sell that, but in the United States they are not going to sell that because that's not part of their culture. So we can see that we can see there how this factor of culture of how we eat, what we eat, affect business. Another one is management, finances, beliefs, and superstition. For example. For finances, could be um, how the, the way of payment when you do transactions with international people. Usually, with inter uh, Peruvian companies, uh, we do the finance when we do the way of payment. We usually use a bank, but sometimes when you work with Chinese people, they want just a transfer. So for us, it is like more risky to do a wire transfer do, do um, a bank we want to do like an LT like use a document with the bank so they can support that they do will give us a product 
Another one could be beliefs and superstitions that this is most more likely to be related with Japanese people. When we work with Japanese people, they are very superstitious about a lot of stuff, about that you cannot talk in a loud way, that you cannot dress with white, for example, in here, when we dress with black, it is when we, are, when we go to funerals, but in Japan, the funeral color is white, so that is superstition, that is a belief. So because of all of this, we really need to study the culture of the country that we will work with. Next. We have. Again, why is culture so important for our business in inputs? So it is just business that we need to create a relationship. This will depend on who we're working with. Another one is male chauvinism. Do you know what male chauvinism means? Male chauvinism is when in a country uh, people think that men are better than women, they are more intelligent, they are more stronger. So in Spanish, male chauvinism would be machismo. And there is a particular story that I have with male chauvinism. I once worked with some Indian people from India. And there was this guy that was speaking to my boss and they were doing some transactions, talking about some prices of the product. And then I had to come in the conference room. So as soon as I sit in the conference room and the Indian guy that was, this meeting was via Skype. So as soon as he saw that me as a woman was sitting there, he just completely freaked out and he stopped talking. And he didn't want to continue doing the transaction. What, what, why was this? He was an Indian and usually in India, you don't have male chauvinism, not so much. But it was because this this person was was Arab. He was an Indian Indian. He was Arab, so he really had male chauvinism. So as soon as he saw me sitting there, he felt that he couldn't work. He couldn't continue working because I was a woman. So that's how we think that um, culture is so important that it can almost break a business deal. Another one is formal or informal, how we talk to people. Do we need, when do we need to use formal? When, do we, when can we start using informal communication with other countries? So next. Mm. Okay, so Carmen says, it is the same. In Japan, women are rarely, do, rarely doing business or interact with men in commercial business. Yes, it is the same. Like I said, uh, there are many countries that have male chauvinism, especially communist countries sometimes and Arab countries. So it is the same. In this case, the, the Arab guy, he wouldn't continue working with me, so he, he cut the, the deal. And then I was asked, by my boss to leave the room with him, with my boss. And when we were outside, he told me, he asked me for, an, he asked me uh, to be, he said he was sorry that I was, that I wasn't able to continue being inside the conference room because of me, because of me, for being a woman, I was going to break the deal, the, the trading that there was, they were making. Yes, we do have an issue there. It is. It has changed because this experience that I had, it happened to me like, um, let's say, seven years ago. So it was the only the only time that I experienced male chauvinism, and it was because of this Arab guy. But later, uh, when I continued working with other people and with other Arab people, they were like more open. It's just that this guy was very traditional, that's why. So that's why we need to know the culture of, our, of the country that we are going to work with. And especially not just the culture, but also who are we going to work with? Is this person traditional or is this person open-minded? 
So next, we have my own culture, Peru. So in here, I want to make a disclaimer. I don't know if you know the word disclaimer, what it is. Disclaimer, it is when, when not everybody is the same. So it would be like in Spanish, descargo de responsabilidad. That's a disclaimer. It is written like this, disclaimer. So I want to make a disclaimer for the next part that we're going to talk about. Not everybody is the same. We have a stereotypes. So what we are going to talk next is how we are as Peruvians, but how other people see us. It doesn't mean that we are all going to be the same. It's just how the stereotype of, of Peruvians are seen in another culture. So how we are. Do we, are we respectful? Do we trust? We are really untrustful and we really go by status, rank, education, and age. So we are, we are really respectful with all other people. Another is how loud we are. Are we really loud? Do we talk softly? So for us as Peruvians, we talk really softly. We are not that loud. Especially we are loud when we are angry. But in another country, it's different. For example, for example, when we hear Russian people talk, they look like they are really, really angry when they talk. And also sometimes we can see the difference of culture in one country. For example, when we hear Chinese people talk, there are two kinds of, there are many kinds of Chinese, but the main person are uh, the Mandarin Chinese and the Cantonese Chinese. The Cantonese is usually the ones that we hear in the Chifa restaurant in Chifa. So the Cantonese uh, Chinese is really loud. They they are talking, they could be talking about themselves at the day of each other, but it sounds that like they are screaming at each other. But on the other hand, the Mandarin Chinese is more softly. They don't scream so loud, they are more like, they talk like us. Ah, it is more softly. Another is, are we direct or indirect? Do we tell people what they want to hear or do we think? So for us, that other culture people, because we have to read between the lines. So that's not really good when we work with uh, cultures that are really direct because they get confused and they get angry and they might think that we are like trying to make a fool of them or scam them, scam stuff. Another one is haggling. Do you know what Carmen says? I think we are not direct persons, so you don't go so slowly when we want to do business. Yes, that's right, we are not the right person. And we go really slow. Yes, we are really, we are, we are really slow. That's, why, that's one of the main reasons why we are so slow. It is because we like to hang, haggling. So what is haggling? Maybe you have heard of the word bargain. So hang, haggling, is when we, for example, um, I tried to buy this cell phone and it is a hundred soles. But I'm gonna tell the lady who's selling me this cell phone, no, I buy it for 90 soles. And then she says, no, 98. And I say, no, 95. So that's handling. Regateo. So do we like to handling, to, be, to hang or no, or no? Yes, we do. We are hard gaining people and very difficult to change position. So that's one of another thing that maybe could be tough to work with another culture that they go that like they they are astray and they say it costs hundred solids and it's gonna be hundred solids and it's gonna be nothing else nothing less or nothing more. Another point that we might see as our own culture is punctuality. 
Are we punctual or not? What do you think? People in our culture, we have a really unpunctual people. But analyzing a little bit more, we are unpunctual. For example, when we say we are going to have a meeting at 9 o'clock, we don't start at 9 o'clock. We might start 9.50 or 9.30. But what is what we expect? We expect that people that are coming from outside arrive at 9 o'clock. But it doesn't mean that the meeting is going to start at 9. In other countries, it's the other way. They say 9, but it means that you have to be there before 9 or, or 9 o'clock o'clock. So you can start at that time, the meeting. So that's very important. It is a weakness. Yes. Another thing is greeting. We spoke about greeting. So how do we greet each other? Do we use one kiss? Do we use two kisses? Do we use a handshake? So in this case, we expect to give a, a handshake, right? So, but sometimes when we get a little more informal, when we get to know the other person in business, we might use one kiss. But this is for women, because between men, they tend to use handshake. Another one is polychronic. Polychronic, what it is polychronic? Do you know? It is a a very difficult word that maybe we haven't seen in, in even in Spanish. So, polychronic means that we tend to do multiple things at once. It means that when we are in a meeting, and some cultures just go there, so they have a schedule, an agenda, so they say, we're gonna talk, talk about just prices. But we as Peruvians are multitasking, and, mul and, mul and we like to achieve multiple goals. So we go there, and we just don't want to talk about the, the price. We will talk about the price. We will talk about when are you going to give it to us. We're going to talk about future deals with this person. So for us, it's very easy to be to do multiple goals at one at one meeting. But for other people that are from other countries country is really hard because they just tend to work really hard in their agenda and just get one goal. And then they expect to do several meetings later to achieve other goals. But we like to do just one meeting and achieve as much as we could in that meeting. Another factor in the polychronic uh, meaning is lateness. Just not being not just being asked late, but also we tend to forgive the lateness of other people and interruption. So maybe one people is just speaking and we like to interrupt, and that is very common between us, between in our culture. But for other people, that might be rude and impolite. So once we know how other cultures perceive us, we can start seeing cultures in the world. So there are many, many countries in the world, but we are going to talk about the main culture. Okay? So I have separated between Europe, Japanese, Jap uh, Europe, Asian, and American. So first, how is the culture in France? So how do we greet each other? According to internet and or um, not just internet, but I have uh, seen this in uh, some studies that have uh, analyzed about uh, how other cultures work with. They say that usually in France they do a handshake and they use a title and a surname. For example, in here I would be Señorita Kibusco. But in France, it would be Madame Kiposko. So 
when we go to a place, to another country, or even if we were here in our country, but or with other people that are coming from other countries and other cultures, it is very polite to at least learn how you use the title. For example, in this case, for France, for Mister, it is Monsieur, and from a lady, it is Madame. Another is that they really appreciate when you try when you try to speak their language. I have talked to a couple of French people, and they are so grateful when you at least tell them bonjour when you are saying hello, and then you can start speaking in. English or in Spanish, and sometimes they prefer if you ask them, like, do you wanna, can you talk in Spanish or English? Because they sometimes, because of cultural, like we have problems with Chile, they usually have problems with, um, with the United States, so French people really avoid using English. So you may ask them first, do you want to talk in Spanish or do you want to talk in English? And they will tell you. Carmen says, I think that in business, it is a must knowing titles before starting business mission. Yes, that's right. That's why we were saying that we need to know about the other culture that we're going to talk to, that we're going to work with. So it is a... Um, a mother of respect. So the other culture, the other person knows that you are really interested in their culture. And you will see when you talk to to people from other cultures, they will greet you in your in your language. For example, I was telling you Hola. Buenos días and gracias y adiós. They, they were the only ones that they knew, but they were very uh, expressful to tell you that they knew these words. So you, so you will know that they are very interested in having an appreciation for your culture and trying to get to know you better. So another country is the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, it is usually a handshake for a greeting. Also, they use title and surname. It is the same as in English. It could be Mr. and Mrs. Miss. Miss. Another is that they are very punctual. They like to be in time and that you have to be in time. Also, there is like a small talk before business. Usually when you talk to people from the United Kingdom, they are not going to ask you personal questions. This is small talk before, like when you're waiting before it starts a business meeting, they will talk to you, but mostly they will talk about the weather instead of personal things. So you might try to talk about, not talk about religion, not talk about the sports, but maybe you could talk about the weather. Another is that they are not too personal. They might, like I said, talk to you, but small, do a small talk, but not asking you personal things. Another country is Germany. In Germany, you may say hi with a firm handshake. Also, you may use a title and a surname. And for the language, it would be her for a male and fro for a female. They are also really punctual. Um, we know these stereotypes that the German are really, are really like to be on time. So we usually use by the term uh, German time. Also, they are really blandness. And their blandness shouldn't be perceived as a rude thing. Uh, do you know what blandness is? Blandness, it is when you speak like really straight and you are really clear when you speak. So in Spanish, blandness will be franqueza. Another would be there's a clear separation between personal life and business. For example, with the German people that I have worked with, um, they are really 
detail orientated. So if you ask them, <clears throat> I want um, this 20 list of details that you mentioned in your quotation, so when you want to buy something, they will give you those 20. Um, when you talk to them in the phone, on the phone, um, they will they will be really nice to you, but they won't be so personal as you may be when you talk to another Latin American person. That they will tell you how are you, how how everything in your country. So they are not like that. They will say how are you, I think you're okay, but they are not that personal. They don't get too personal. They like really differentiate business and life, personal life. Another country is Russia, that a lot of people might be really interested in because of the soccer, the soccer match. So in Russia, it is very important to do a firm handshake and also make eye contact. So you have to look at the person when you are saying, when you are shaking their hand. Also, it is just a title and a surname too. They like to be really, really direct and they really expect you to be really punctual. Another countries are Italy. In Italy, it is usually for business encounters to greet each other with a handshake. Once you have formed a relationship, and this is very important, they might even press cheeks. Press cheeks is when, like, you're going to give a kiss to the person, but you don't give them a kiss in the cheek, so their their cheek and my cheek would just do a little press. So I have seen that this is, this is not only uh, acceptable for between male and women, women and women, but also between males. They tend to give a kiss to other men, and this is natural for them. Um, they use titles and surnames also. Their relations, their business relationship, their business are really relationship driven. They like to talk a lot. They're really expressive and they're really loving people. They like to express it that they are they care for you. And also the negotiations with them can take time. Like us, they are really they really like to think about things before buying. They like to go over and go over and go over and think what what is that. Um, if they can maybe make a better deal, or maybe they can change something, so they are very... They, they like to take their time before they go and they say, yes, I want this. Another country is Spain. For Spain, they usually uh, greet each other with a handshake, and in here, in Spain, when a relationship has formed, they give two kisses, one in the right and one in the left. So, but this is again like in Italy, once a relationship has formed. So, for Italy, it's pressing cheeks, and for Spain, it's two kisses. Okay? They use title and surname, like in Spanish, it will be Señor and Señora. And they like to build a relationship. They are really also very talkative. They like to talk to people. And this is a problem that I have encountered when talking to Spanish people. They talk at the same time. For example, when you are in a conference room, usually uh, for Peruvians, we go like the chief and two other people are gonna help. And for them, they also come in with two people, three people. And usually, we tend to be quiet when someone is speaking, but they speak at the same time. There will be the chief talking, and then the other person that work with them will talk, and they will talk. And you will hear like they are talking, in, like the both at the same time in front of each other. And you are like, it could be really hard to. It could be confusing and really hard to focus on who do I need to listen to. Another country is Japan. Japan usually do a handshake, but they like to bow. 
So bowing is used as a greeting. This is really important to know because um, let's make a pause because Carmen is bright enough. She says the Portuguese are the same. They talk all at the same time. Yes, yeah, they're really close. They're next to each other, the country. So they are really, they are pretty similar. Yes, and it is hard because for Spanish people and for Portuguese people, it's really hard to understand because we might be multitasking, but we like to focus, especially when we're talking about businesses because we're talking about prices and delivery times. So it is hard to know what they are saying if everybody's talking at the same time. So continue with Japan. In Japan, we do a handshake and a bowing. A bowing, do you know what is a bowing? A bowing is when people um, put their head like to the front, like they do like this. So that's a bowing, reverencia. Um, it is very usually to Japanese people do the bowing. I have seen they don't they don't do the bowing so hard. They don't go so in the front. But they do like a little bow because it is their culture, so they make that. So you, when you talk to them, when you greet them, if they bow to you, you are very respectful for a polite thing to do. It will be to give the bow back, and they will later say hi to you in your in your language and maybe do a handshake. So for Japan, it is the same. Just a type of surname. If you can use, if you can search the title in Japanese, it will be great, or it could be English because uh, everybody, every Japanese person that would come to another country to make business businesses, they will definitely speak English. And this is a, a good thing because they are really people that like to work hard on what they do, so their English usually is pretty, pretty good. So we won't have any any kind of problems trying to listen to them. Another is they like, oh, this is a really important thing. When you meet Japanese people, and not just Japanese people, Asian people in general, it is important that you receive and give a business card with two hands. So, for example, when you give a business card, let's imagine that this is a business card, you will give them with two hands, and when you receive them, you have to receive them with both hands. So <clears throat> you should never, never, and this is something Peruvian people usually do is they take the business card, they read it, and they put it in their pocket. That is no, no, no for Japanese people. You have to have the business, business card in your hand, and you have to, while they are talking to you, you have to read it. And you cannot put the business card in your pocket or some or somewhere else. You have to keep it in your in your hand. And if you are in a business meeting and they give you and you see, you have to put your the business card the person that gave you in front of your in front of your desk or in the table that you're sitting with. For example, if I'm sitting here and this is the table that we're working in, so I will have to have the business card and put it here, in here. So they might, so they see that we are not hiding it. So we are, we are really interesting, interested, and we are showing respect to the other person. Another detail from another characteristic of Japanese culture is that their their seniors are the ones that lead. So. The most older people, or the people with the highest rank, is the one that is going to lead the the meeting. So um, I have worked with Japanese people, and even though um, I was in the meeting, I was the person with the highest rank, or the or the person that knew, that had more experience. Um, the Japanese people tend to look or see or listen to what the oldest person in the room is saying. So, for example, I was working and I was the leader of the group, but there was next to me a person that was that obviously looked older than me, that it was a senior person, and they wouldn't 
they would listen and they like really pay attention what the other speaker is talking. So that is really, um, really important for them. It is a really um, culture thing that they really respect the older people. Another country is China. Usually for Chinese people, they greet with a handshake. Um, they use Siphon surname. Um, they speak English uh, when they come to do business. It is usually they speak English. But in here, it would be a little hard to understand them. Why? Because sometimes we um, notice that they cannot pronounce the R. So they instead of saying the R, they say L. So instead of saying, for example, instead of saying empresarial, they would say empresarial, like with an L. So it is very difficult for when you work with Chinese people that have this problem. So that's why you have to sharp your listening skills. So when you talk to these persons with Chinese people that talk in English, you can understand them. And it may, it may take you time. For me, it was a process of learning how to understand Chinese people. Um, a couple of years ago, I studied Chinese for approximately one and a half years, Mandarin Chinese. So my teachers, the first four months, they speak Spanish, but as I progress in my Chinese level, I had to, uh, I had other people as teachers, not just uh, for my first teacher. So these other people, they didn't speak Spanish, they only speak English. So I was learning Chinese in English because my teacher just speak English and Chinese. And it was really, really hard because uh, instead of saying, I'm sorry, this is like, Instead of saying work, they would say work, work, and, and we were all the students were like, what are you saying? <laughs> so it was really hard, but with time, with after I think a couple of months, it would be like two or three months, we were able to sharpen our listening skills in English, so we would understand what they were saying, and this was really helpful for me for when I was, for when later. From where, from where later I work with Chinese people. Another characteristic is that we need to receive and give business cards with two hands. This is the same as Japanese, as I told you. You have to give the, the business card with two hands and receive them with two hands. And once you have it and you're going to sit on the table and start a business, put it in your Table, in front of your table, no? in front of you. And another one is they like face-to-face -face communication. This is really important. For example, when you go to, um, for example, a couple of weeks ago was the Expo Plus, and in this Expo, um, there were a lot of Chinese um, companies. So they really like to not just talk to you by the phone or by email, so they like to do face to face and they will tell you that they would like to visit you. So when I was here, I, when I was in the Expo Plus, I was trying to do a sale to buy some machines. And we were, the person that I was working for, the company that I was working for, um, they just wanted to do everything via email, but this Chinese guy, he wasn't gonna accept that. He wanted to visit the, the factory that I, were, I was working with. And not just that, but he also said that he had a client that already uh, had bought his machines and that he really, really wanted to go visit his client. So they like to uh, build relationships with with people, with, with the people they are working with. So he had such a good uh, relationship with his client that his client was able and he was happy to receive another future client of 
with your Chinese provider. Very, very important. Another country would be the United Arab Emirates. So like I said, we have to be um, really careful when we speak to or when we work with uh, cultures that are really different from us, especially because like we were saying, many chauvinism can interfere like really, really hard. So in this case, with the United Arab Emirates, uh, we use a handshake, but we have to do it with the right hand, okay? Why is this? Because in Islamic cultures, the left hand is used for impure tasks. For example, with the right hand, they eat, because there are a lot of uh, Islamic countries that they eat with the right hand. They eat with the hand, so the right hand is for eat, and the left hand for personal hygiene. So when you go to the bathroom, you will use your left hand. So it is that's why it is considered an impure hand. So you always have to use your right hand, okay? Another uh, characteristic is that they use the title and then the surname. So when you speak to them, you may say Sayyid for male and Sayyida for a female. You have to be very careful because in Islamic cultures, they usually, um, you are not allowed to talk to a female. So you will have to ask in advance to the person that you are talking to if you are able to speak to the women with the, if you are able to speak to the women that will be in, the, in your conference and your business meeting. Come and ask, what happened with left hand people? <laughs> I have read, I don't know if this is true, but I have read that they tend to spank. You know what is spank? To, um, to beat, golpear, when you, when you are left handed. Because it is like a really, really bad thing to be a left handed. It is, it is a different culture for us. For us, it would be crazy, but for them, it is a bad thing. So, in this case, if you are left-handed and you are working with a culture that is an Islamic culture, you will have to you will have to search about this country, to search about the culture, and be in mind that you have to use your right hand. That is really important. That's why it's so important to learn about the culture that we want to work with in advance. Yeah, what a baby. <laughs> yes. And also there is another. For example, if you I don't know, if you broke your right hand, your right arm and you are unable, they say that it is uh preferably that you say that, that you excuse yourself that you cannot uh say hello instead of saying in instead of giving a handshake with your left hand. So you really must must avoid using your left hand. Another characteristic for the United Arab Emirates is that the right hand is just not only for handshake, but also if you're gonna be to give something to someone, you have to use your right hand. For example, if you're gonna pass a document, you cannot give it with your left hand. You have to give it to your right hand. Just a document or maybe a personal, a personal business card, you always have to use your right hand. Not so it is not just for handshake, but also for giving things. Another is the use of telephone during meetings. We may have seen in movies, maybe, that we also see Islamic people or Arab people that it could be happening something really, really bad and they're on the phone. It is an stereotype. But it is an stereotype, an stereotype that is usually true. So um, they say that when you talk to them, when you're in a business meeting, you may usually see Arab people like you're talking, you're talking like I am talking to you, and they will be like sending a text message, and there will be oh there will be I don't know maybe three people, and one of them will be like talking on the phone, 
So it is pretty normal. It is not unpolite for them. It is like a normal thing to do. Another thing, it is another people. Another, I'm sorry. Another country is India. So for India, it is usually used as a, as a greet, a gentle handshake. Another is that you might use a title and a surname. Again, they if you work with Indian people, they might usually speak English. So you might say Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Another characteristic is that you also for India have to give things with the right hand. So always use the right hand. And another characteristic is that they usually won't say to you no because no it is an impolite thing to say to another person so for example if you say to them um i don't know this product is a hundred soles do you want to buy it they will and if they are not able or they won't want to pay for a hundred soles for this they won't say to you no they will they will use another word like maybe or we can talk, we can talk later so when you speak to Indian people and you fear that they they say maybe or later it means that it is a no but a hidden a no between the lines because for them to say to you no it, is, it will be impolite so later another country is australia in Australia, they use a firm handshake as a greeting. Also, they use Titan and surname. They speak English. Um, they are very punctual. And a really um, unique, character, unique characteristic, it is that they are really friendly when, you, when they communicate with you. But when they start doing business, they get like really serious and really, and really extremely direct. So it is important when you work with Australian people that if you are talking friendly or it is not a, a serious thing that you want to say to them, you express, you say to them that this is uh, like a, a small talk or friendly conversation. And once you want to start doing the business meeting, you, you tell them that it would be the starting of the business meeting so they can like change their mood. And, Pass from friendly to direct. Another country is Canada. Canada is they use as a grid a firm handshake. And they use title and surname and they are very punctual. They also like to make a lot of eye contact. And finally we have the most uh, common country that we work with. Um, usually, when I have worked with um, in companies doing international trading, it is about like eighty percent of the exchange, the trade, that it is done with American people. So it is really, really important for us to know how to work with them. So for the United States, as a grid, it's just a firm handshake and to make eye contact when you say hello. And also uh, to be, they just, they tend to be really friendly and they like to do small talk. Before you uh, go in a business meeting, like the United, that like, like people from the United Kingdom, they like to talk about the weather, they even might ask you about how are things in your country, especially because they are really interested in politics. So they might not know uh, like straight uh, which political um, party you like, but they might ask you um, related stuff about economics. How are economic things in your country? Is it okay? Is, is the business going well? Is it going bad? Another characteristic is that they are really direct. They like to go to straight to the point. So, for example, when you, um, for example, when you send an email, 
we usually tend to be like really make long phrases like um, for example buenos dias eh, en el presente correo les le mando la solicitud de tal cosa but they as americans when they send you an email they are really right they will send you hello or hello hello mrs kibuzko or hello dear and they will go straight to like this is the price this is the product this is how i'm going to give it to you and just like go straight why because there is a phrase a catch phrase that we might um choose it many times not just in movies but also i think the clean for bank uses too but it is time is money el tiempo es dinero so that's why they don't like to be so to expand themselves on the airport. They like to go direct. So next, we are going to see a, a little video, okay? So I don't know if you have seen the tech talks. So there is a tech talk from Chris Smith that he talks about human and culture in international business. I'm gonna play. Um, next week, last week, you had problems listening to to the video, so I want you to like turn the, your volume up, turn the volume to your video, so you can hear it. Okay. Let me check. Let me know if you can listen to it, please. I'm gonna let me let me uh, know if you can if you are able to hear. I'm gonna talk to you about why culture cultural difference actually are the management of perception, or to put it differently, why culture matters. When can you hear it or no? Please, Carmen, let me know if you can hear it. Matters when we're working internationally. First, a bit of an introduction about myself. Who am I? Um, as you can see, my name is Chris. My last name is Smith. Uh, my nationality is Dutch. And as they say, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. Or to put it somewhat different, is as a finishing touch, God created the Dutch. I know. Let me know if you can understand. If you can understand it. If no, let me. I have it here, maybe I can put it with the subtitles. Wait. Okay. Okay, first. I'm gonna share you my my uh, wait. Uh, I'm gonna share you my I'm gonna share you my my screen. So you can read in, in a bit, so you can read to the, to the caption. Okay, perfect. So we're going to hear it. Yes, okay. So we're going to start, okay? Introduction and ask your 
Can you hear me, Carmen? I'm sorry. It got freeze my computer. I'm gonna give you the um the PPTs um for this, so you might see them later. You might see the video later. Um, I'm um, yes. I'm gonna give you the material. Don't worry. I'm I'm gonna give it to you right now. So basically, in this video, he talks about. Um, stereotypes. He says that we usually tend to see other cultures with stereotypes. So he really mentioned two important things. One is that we have to learn that culture is not about isolated persons. It is about a group of people. And also that culture is really, really related, like as we said here in, on the beginning. It is about customs and beliefs so it is not something that you are born with it is something you learn from your from your friends from your parents from the people you live with so culture is a group of people and the beliefs and the characteristics of the factors inside a culture are learned so that's why we tend to do stereotypes so when we talk to people we have to really really uh, understand that we may know that french people russian people japanese people indian people are in a way but it doesn't mean that everybody is going to be the same because not everybody not everyone in peru is as uh, stereotype says so finally as a final a phrase that it really gets to me from Chris Smith, from the from the person that did that tech talk. It is that understanding cultural differences are often the determining the determining factor in success or failure in a business. So we have to really learn and understand how the culture, how different our culture and the culture from the other people is. We have to ask if we have a question, we have to study beforehand. So we will have a highest factor of success in our video. Yes, it is another word. It is, he said, trying to understand ourselves and learning more about groups and around the people. And there is an also when you see the video and the end it says uh, when we see our flaws. We will learn from when we um, see what we don't like from other cultures is when we learn more about ourselves so it is very important so here are the references from when i did all this class from today so there are three three i'm sorry there are three books you might find them in the internet um, well, the dictionaries that I have used. So I'm gonna give you right now the link for the for the material. So here is the link of the material. That's the PPT link. And in here is the link for the exam. That's the link for the exam. So copy the both the links, save them so you can later see a little about the PPT and then take your exam. Um, again, as the last exam, it was just taken from what we discussed and what we see on the material. So for this exam, it will be the same. As I told you, there were little hints that I gave you about when I was making the presentation. So that will be on your exam. So it will be thank it will be all for today. I want to thank you for your attention. Um, you really helped Carmen. You helped me a lot. You give a lot of information. Um, and when, well, I will see you next week with the with the third session. Okay. So thank you. Bye bye.